Okay, welcome everyone to tonight's team call for Leap of Faith on the Rise. We have a guest speaker tonight, and I'm just going to pass it over to Shannon to introduce her. Well, I am so excited, you guys, to introduce to you Andrea. So Andrea is someone who I looked up to immensely. She has just always been rocking the business. Um, her upline, Jamie Ravelli, was my very first power partner. And so I had just watched Andrea and watched her and I finally just reached out to her one day and we just clicked really quickly and we really pretty much we worked together for a while and then it kind of went silent and then we both were like, Hey, I'm going to go for Emerald. And I said, me too. And her and I just linked arms and we talked every single day and just did this. And I am just so inspired by her because she had a newborn. You have two other children, right? That was your third child. And she doesn't ever use that as an excuse. I mean, she could be nursing and be up all night and, you know, just, crazy. Like, I think I don't sleep. Like she legitly doesn't sleep. And yet she was still out there not making any excuses and just absolutely going after the goals that she had. And so my, the inspiration that I got was a lot from Andrea, just her positivity and the way that she duplicates and the way she does things. I just really look up to her a lot. So, um, I was so excited to have her, um, say yes to sharing with you guys, just some of the tips and tricks of things she uses. So Andrea, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Shannon. That was such a nice introduction and thank you, Tracy, for praying over the call. That was really sweet. I've never, been on a team call, but I love that. Um, so I love Shannon and Tracy. They are both leaders who I also have looked up to. And, you know, you just meet people throughout this journey that inspire you. And that's one of the things that I absolutely love about Plexus. So I know some of you are new on here. That's awesome, Stephanie. You haven't even gotten your products yet. So I hope that what I share with you guys speaks to like an array of people. There may be some people on here who've been around for a little bit longer, um, but I will give you guys a little bit of backstory about why I got started in the first place. And then Shannon did want me to touch on some tips that I might have for sort of time management and just balancing this business along with busy life and kid and new baby who actually is nine months now. So he's not so new anymore, but he's still not sleeping through the night. <laughs> so we gotta work on that. Um, so I started Plexus back in 2016, so about three years ago. And uh, for my health, like most people, I was struggling with digestive issues. My upline, who Shannon mentioned, um, her name is Jamie Ravelli. She is a diamond now. Um, she, which is crazy to think three years ago, we had no clue what we were doing. We had no clue what we were getting ourselves into. And here we are today. She's a diamond. I'm an emerald and we're going to Hawaii in a few days. And it's so surreal. It literally, like I think about when people go silver and I remember going silver. Like it's, I don't feel like I'm that far beyond that place. I'm still the same person, but I've grown so much. And so to think that that much can happen in a matter of, for some people, a year, for some people, two, three. Um, my background is I'm a physical therapist, and I went to school for six years to get my degree, well, five years, my master's, and then I continued on and got my doctorate degree in PT. And so a lot of schooling, seven years total, a lot of student loans, so much time and effort put into my career. And then I had my first daughter after I think I had been working, well, I don't know how many years, I don't know, a while. I worked full time as a PT for eight years. And I had two children. And the after I had my first daughter, though, I knew I wanted to be home. I missed her. I had that guilt about being away from her all week. And so, but I had student loans, you know, our finances I needed to work so but it was always on my heart to be home with them so this came to me plexus came to me because of my health digestive issues but Jamie did not know that I was like desperately wanting to be home and so I actually got done work we got to a financial place where I could get done work and I just went to per diem so I could work as needed 
um, in 2016, but I was also struggling with it, severe anxiety and depression at that time. And I had been on medication prior to having my kids for eight years for that. I went off to have babies because I wanted to be, you know, off of meds and things, but it was really bad at that time. And so I thought getting done work, my husband basically said to me, you either need to get back on medication, see a counselor, get done work, do what you need to do so that I can have my wife back and you're not like crying all the time. <laughs> and so I got done work. I was home with the girls and I thought that that would really kind of help things out, but I still was really struggling. So I finally, I ignored Jamie for four months. I really, I mean, I was not in a good place emotionally anyway. So I, people, I always think back, like one of my good friends from college, my best friends had called me and I didn't answer the phone and I didn't return her phone, phone call for a week. And she had actually called me reaching out to me because she had had a miscarriage. And I was one of the first people that she called and I didn't answer that call. And I, I think back to that, I was in such a bad place mentally that I was not there for her. And I can't imagine now not having plexus in my life to get my mental health to where it is now, to be able to be there and show up for the people in my life, my family, my good friends, my husband. I want to be the best version of myself to be there for those people. And plexus has given that back to me. So for that, I will be forever thankful. And you guys just, you never know who needs this. You never know when you're reaching out to people, you can't, I mean, yes, you're going to do it scared and be afraid of what people might think of you. But ultimately you have to understand that there are people who are putting a smile on their face because that's what they have to do when they are suffering or they have something going on. Um, or they're not happy in their career or their job and they they want a different um, means of income and they just don't know this opportunity is there. Like they, I didn't know. So I joined for the health. I felt better pretty quickly. Jamie started sharing before I did and she told me that she made $1,800 in a month and a light bulb went off because I was like, I'm home now and I feel guilty because I'm not making money. <laughs> So I said, all right, I will share to at least get my products paid for. Um, I went silver the first month I shared, and then I went gold after four months. And I got really excited, but then I also got overwhelmed. And I thought, I'm home because I want to be with my kids and very present. And I really struggled with balancing plexus and being home with kids. And I think no matter what, like when you start a network marketing business, you're like, what the heck? Like I'm, I'm in control of this. Like how do I figure out my schedule and how to fit it in and not let it take over or consume you, um, or do enough work to actually make progress. So you have to figure that out for yourself. Nobody can tell you, I mean, I can tell you time management tips, but that's something you really have to take a close look at your life and how you can fit this in, but make it a priority. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself, but we'll get to that a little bit more. Um, but it does, it looks, it looks different for everybody. So that's something that you do kind of have to figure out for yourself. Um, so anyways, back to just real quick, the recap. Um, I got, I went to, I got gold in October of 2016. And then by January, I lost all my points. I went from 100 points back down to 15. I was back down to silver in a matter of a few months because I stopped working my business because I got overwhelmed and I didn't know how to teach people what to do and so I lost everything. And then I was like, okay, I'm either going to do this or I'm not. Like Jamie was still going. She had signed up somebody else, Abby Wallet Kernemitz, who's also an Emerald now, almost Sapphire. And Abby was having success and I was like, oh, you know, they're doing this. So I, I either need to get on this train and go or stop stalling. So by March, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm recommitting to this. I really see the potential in this. Um, basically what I did was I wrote down, I didn't know how to print off my friends list at that point on Facebook. So I literally wrote down every single person on my Facebook list in, in a, like a planner 
and I wrote five names down per day. And I started reaching out to five people per day, every single day, no excuse. No, I did it in alphabetical order. I didn't even have like any, I don't know, strategy. <laughs> I just did it. And I did it scared and I just went for it. And then I went to convention in May and my belief was really solidified there. If you haven't been to a convention or an event, Plexus events will solidify your belief. And then by June, I had re-ranked gold and I went senior gold. So that was sort of a little snowball of momentum. And it really was because I was taking consistent action in reaching out to people. And it's because I had committed to doing that. Um, and at that point, it was I was about six, almost, well, almost a year in. And between six months to a year is where I really saw the shift in how I felt with my mental health, anxiety and depression. Um, I also had digestive issues. I had been dairy free for five years because I couldn't eat dairy. I felt miserable. I would be bloated and gassy. And I had, this is TMI, but I mean, I went as far as having a poop sample because I thought I had like C. diff because I worked in a rehab facility. Um, and my bowel movements were just so not good. And so all of that got better faster. Like within three months, that started to regulate. But between six months to a year is where I really saw the shift in how I felt. I started exercising again. I decided to train for a half marathon and then a full marathon. I completed both of those things. So everything was just getting better because I felt so much better. And people notice that, you know, when you're really committed to your health. Um, yes, I was reaching out to people, but I was also living and sharing my health journey with people. And that's what I tried to tell people when they're scared of sharing. It doesn't have to be salesy. We are not salespeople. We are sharing with people and inspiring them to be healthier. And so when you share your journey and be vulnerable, even if you don't have a full story yet, that's okay. Just share along the way, share the little bits and pieces. People want more energy. People want better mental clarity. Um, they don't want that like mom brain fog, at least not to the full extent. <laughs> when you have kids, it's always there, I think. But um, so anyway, that's kind of my story of, um, I committed to the business and then I ranked up gradually like but eight to ten months between each rank and I think with each rank up I had work to do of personal growth and I would kind of like hit a plateau my points would be like eh, they're here and like how do I get to the next level and I had to do some self-reflection and realize how I needed to grow as a leader or personally um, how I needed to help my team. And at about senior gold is really when I, you know, the focus was taken off me. Senior gold and beyond, I think you really have to start pouring into the people under you. And so often, you know, I would like be looking up to Jamie, my sponsor, or my sidelines and like collaborating with them, saying, what are you doing? Or and I think at a certain point, you really, I mean, you should be doing this as soon as you sign somebody up. But once you start growing a team, that's when you have to help your teammates, you know, set goals and strategize and pour into them and pour belief into them and share, tell them how great they are, what they're good at. So I really started doing that at Senior Gold. I had two girls who were super committed and they live locally, so we would meet in person, but if you can't, you could do a Zoom call. And we would meet at least once a month, if not more often, um, to do just like goal setting and strategy and dreaming. Like we would talk about, you know, attaching the, you know, our monetary goals and our rank goals to real life things. Like I said, when, when I went gold, this is, um, I'll make this brief, but my grandmother, um, she doesn't have any money. She lives in subsidized housing by herself and she, her bed broke and she didn't tell anybody but me. <laughs> she wouldn't tell my dad. And so 
my goal, she bought an, an air mattress from Walmart. And I was like, Grammy, you can't sleep on an air mattress. So my goal was to buy her a new bed. So, you know, and with my plexus money, like that was something additional that I wanted to buy her. And I had already felt guilty about not working anymore, not being able to contribute to our family. So it was hard to say, I want to take money and put it towards something else. But when you put money towards something meaningful, it, you just can work for it so much easier. You know, you're not like, when you think of that goal in mind, you're like, okay, I'm doing this for my Grammy. <laughs> like, I'm going to sit down and work. Or initially, I wanted to be able to pay for my my daughter's dance tuition. Because if you paid for it in full, it was like $400 for the year. Versus if you paid monthly, it was cost more money. So just, you know, do, when you do your goal setting, put it with something that you can work towards. Um, okay, I got off track a little bit there. But so basically, um, in terms of time management, I think first you need to make Plexus a priority, like decide for yourself that you're committing and that it is a priority in your life. And if you're on this call tonight, Plexus is a priority in your life. So just own that. It's so easy to be wishy-washy and be like, yes, I want to do it. No, I don't. I'm scared. Yes, I want to do it. It's taking up too much time. Yes, I want to do it, but I feel overwhelmed. How do I do it? So you just need to commit, just commit. And when you do, it becomes a priority in your life. But then you have to figure out how to prioritize that priority. Um, and I think really like we talk a lot about mindset in Plexus and in network marketing and making sure you have the right mindset about things. But more than that, I feel like it's a mentality for me anyway doing this business is a mentality that I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up on myself. I'm not going to, once I decided to commit and make Plexus a priority in my life, just like my family is, just like when I went to PT school, you know, that was a priority. So I'm not going to give up. There were times where I wanted to drop out of PT school. Like I hated it. I was on one clinical rotation. I hated it. I was like, I'm done. I'm not going to be a PT anymore, even though I'm in year five. <laughs> so if you're in month five of Plexus and it's a struggle right now, it's okay. Like we're, we all go through struggles. You can't learn and grow something without going through struggles. So just know that if your mentality is, I am not going to give up, but this is my priority, then you just go through the ups and downs of the growth process, and that's okay. So if you hit a roadblock or a plateau, that means one of three things, I say. It either means, one, you need to learn something new. So example, for me right now, I've like reached out to every single person I know, I feel like, and I'm gaining new contacts because I've been in this for three years. I'm meeting new people and you know, they go on to my list of people to talk to eventually, but I need to learn Instagram and I'm scared of it because I'm like, I don't know. Yes, Tracy. Right. And, but I just listened to this morning, um, Stephen Furtick. I love him, but he was talking about like just learning new things. You, you can't like get all overwhelmed by like this, big picture idea like you have to break it down so each day learn something new about it and then eventually you'll get it you'll get the hang of it so okay so if you're having a roadblock or a plateau you either need to learn something new number two you need to grow as a person so it could be a mindset issue um, if you're lacking belief in yourself if you just have a negative Mindset, if you're holding on to excuses or something, I mean, I think mindset is something that you can always be working on. None of us have perfect mindsets. So um, that might be something, and that's something that your sponsor can really help you identify, I feel like. Sometimes you need somebody to tell you, you know, I see this as being something that might be holding you back, because it's hard to admit those things sometimes that we're making excuses for ourselves. And then the third thing I would say is that maybe you need to expand your network because this is a business where we're talking to people 
And if you don't have enough people to talk to, then yeah, you might need to meet new people, but that can't be something that holds you back because look at like Brooke Hemingway when she first started. Um, I think she had 200 Facebook friends. She lives on a small island in Hawaii. Yes, she's a nurse and her husband's a doctor and they have good influence, but she had, but she had a small bubble. So she had to expand her network and we all can do that. There are ways to do that. Um, absolutely. So if you've hit a roadblock or a plateau, either one, it's because you need to learn something new. Two, it's because you need to grow as a person or a leader. Or three, you need to expand your network and maybe influence a little bit like credibility. But that those are all things that we can do. So, you know, excuses can get in the way of forward momentum, feeling overwhelmed, feeling not good enough. Comparison is the thief of joy. Um, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough help. I don't have enough support. These are all things that we can use as excuses. And I'm sure I've told myself every single one of those things. And I'm sure many of you have, but you can't let the excuses hold you back. And the, you know, the longer you do the heart, then, then you get down on yourself. Like the quicker you can get over the excuses, the easier it is to feel good about yourself. Like the, when you put yourself like this call tonight <clears throat> was scary for me. I had like hives. I think I still do and rash. I still do as an, as an Emerald and I've been doing zoom calls now for like, you know, two years, but I've never liked public speaking. And the first time I had Megan Castanian, who is another Emerald upline of mine asked me to do a zoom call for her team back when I was gold. And I almost had a panic attack. Like I had to drink a glass of wine before I called my sister and said, I don't think I can do it. Um, watching back some of the first videos I made, like when I made my first why video, it was a challenge that they had us do. And I knew I was like talking in a whisper and I was so scared. And so the more you do things that you're afraid of, it's true. Like you do get over your fears and you feel so good every time. And so this week is crazy because it's back to school week. I had, I have a second grader, my middle started kindergarten and then the nine month old, my son and the kid, the girl, the, my daughter that started kindergarten is having a really hard time. We've been on the struggle bus. She's cried every night for the past week. So I'm emotionally exhausted, not sleeping through the night, trying to pack for Hawaii. There's a lot, there's always chaos. And when Shannon asked me, I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, one more thing. No, I'm just going to do it because I know it's something that is challenging me and I'm giving back to her and I'm going to feel so good after I get off this call by doing that, by putting myself out there. So, you know, sometimes just saying you're going to do it and committing to it and then just getting it done is better than just like dragging your feet through the mud and being like one foot in, one foot out. Cause you're going to beat yourself up more for doing that than you are for just like putting in that effort and getting it done. Um, of course you need to rest and things like that too, but <laughs> you find time for that. And so that's part of the time management piece I wanted to say too, is for me, I have found it really effective to schedule in my family time. And that sounds kind of weird. Like normally you schedule, your business, you schedule work, and then the rest is all like fun. But I think with network marketing um, and, you know, Plexus and in general, it can consume you sometimes. Like it can be a 24 seven business. And there are times that it has driven me crazy or like even my kids, my oldest daughter will be like, mom, get off your phone. Or my husband is like, I just want to have a night that your phone's away and we spend time together. So for a while now, I, I schedule, so Friday nights, my husband and I have a date night, we put our phones away, I don't do any plexus work that night, um, it's scheduled date night. My kids, when they get home from school from like 3.30 until whenever they go to bed usually, um, 7, 7.30, I really try not to do any plexus work in that time. That's like my chunk of time that I don't, like I put my phone away and I'm present. That can be hard, especially when it's new and it's exciting and like somebody messages you and I need to respond to that message. 
But just remember that I always say, and you guys have probably heard this before, like there's no emergency in Plexus or in network marketing in general. There's no people, we might really feel it urgent. And I guess if like there's a free code and it's ending in two hours, that might be an emergency <laughs> to sign somebody up. But in general, people are not like, I need to sign up right now, or I need her to answer my question right now. So just know that you can get to it. Um, so that's a, been a big help is I've scheduled in my family time and the things that are important to me and I stick to that schedule. Um, the other thing I would say is, um, for me really, I've just fit it in the nooks and crannies. I have because I've mostly been a stay at home mom. So I don't have the same routine every day. I think people who have like a consistent schedule and maybe go to work, you can say, okay, on my, once I get to work in the parking lot, I'm going to spend 20 minutes sending out messages or on my lunch break, you know, you can schedule it that way a little bit better. But that's kind of what I talked about in the beginning is that you have to take a look at your life in your schedule and see what works to you. Um, and how much time you can put into it and when you can do that. And again, that's something your sponsor can help you with. I've worked a lot with some of my girls with time management and figuring out what works best for them. Some people like to do it every day, send, you know, doing your IPA. Some people like to do power hours a couple times a week to get their work done. Um, so whatever that looks like for you. Um, and then one other thing for me that's been really helpful is how I start my day really impacts like the rest of my day. And it's so easy for us all to just like wake up and get on social media and get on your phone and check Facebook or check messenger. And it's a habit that I really had to break and it's so freeing once I did. And it is a, ha and a habit is something that gradually over time you develop and get better at. So don't beat yourself up if you're like, I'm not going to check Facebook anymore in the morning. And then you find yourself doing it because the more that you practice it, all of a sudden you're like, oh, it just clicks and I'm not doing it anymore. But I get up, um, I do get up early. Like I get up around five, five thirty at the latest. And I, first thing I have on my phone, a devotional app. So I go into there, I read the verse of the day while I'm peeing. <laughs> like my alarm goes off, I go to go pee and I read my verse of the day. And then when I spend my like 15 to 20 minutes getting ready before I go downstairs, I always go onto YouTube and I listen to an inspirational, motivational, a lot of times a spiritual um, thing. So like I listen to those in the morning and it always puts my mind in the right frame of mind. But before, when I used to get on my phone and look at Messenger and see that I needed to respond to people, and then I would be downstairs like trying to get my kids breakfast and looking at messages and responding, it was awful. It was like, it just didn't feel good. And so if you can just start your day off on the right foot, whatever that is for you, if it's listening to something inspirational or doing a devotional or writing in a gratitude journal, for 10 minutes, you know, you can find, or working out, some people like to get up and exercise right away. If you can find something that um, helps you start your day out on the right foot, the rest of your day is gonna be so much more efficient. Um, so that's something that's been really helpful for me too. Um, okay, and then basically, I know I've been close to half an hour, so I'll wrap up, but I just think that Doing something like this pushes you outside of your comfort zone sometimes. But that is a good thing. Like as we get older and we get into our routines and our jobs, and if you're a mom or a parent, you kind of get on the hamster wheel a little bit and we don't push ourselves outside of our comfort zones very often. We're always telling our kids like they're trying these things and they're learning and growing and we're so proud of them. And it's good to do that. You, you become proud of yourself. My kids are proud of me. Like when they see me hit a goal, um, we celebrate together. So there will be periods where you will be outside of your comfort zone or you might be pushing and working a little harder. And that's great. And then there's going to be periods where you take a step back and you reflect. 
I had my son in November of last year of 2018. And I didn't work my business a lot for like two months because I had a brand new baby, but it's okay. Like I was able to step back and things still kept going. And that's the beauty of this business and residual income and having a team and people that lift you up. Um, you're able to take steps back because of life or because you need time to reflect and grow. But when you are in momentum and when you are excited and you're sharing and people are you know, joining you or getting excited, take advantage of that and you know, work a little harder during those periods of time because it is worth it. Um, the work is absolutely worth it. Um, I don't think, I'm sure Tracy, you can attest to this, like I don't think you'll ever talk to or meet somebody in Plexus, an emerald, a sapphire, or a diamond, like a jewel, who says it wasn't worth it. Like it wasn't worth it to get here. It was all for nothing. Like this, that was, you know, I'm over it. <laughs> it's worth it. It's worth the work and the effort, even though it's not always easy. I mean, that's the truth. Like I know I'm somebody who, when I first started, like I wanted peace all the time. I wanted peace in my house. I wanted my kids to always be happy. I wanted things. I'm like, it was a struggle because working through some of the hard stuff did not feel peaceful all the time but i've learned that that's good it's okay to feel uncomfortable like being okay with being uncomfortable sometimes does that go being comfortable with being uncomfortable is a really good thing it's just like when you're in a hard workout and you're like oh i'm sweaty and i can barely breathe and i don't feel great but like you're pushing through that hard part of the workout and then you like all of a sudden you're like the endorphins release and you feel amazing and you get done your workout and you feel so good. It's like that sometimes in places. <laughs> so um, I don't know if anybody has any questions, finding people, linking arms with people like I did with Shannon is always so helpful. If you find somebody that's kind of like on your same level, um, maybe they're just working towards silver or just working towards gold or you know, maybe they've been doing this for two years like you have, and you guys want to just like all of a sudden just go for it. Linking arms with people can really be helpful too um, with sideline people. So I think that's it. Set your mentality to not give up on yourself, to make it a priority. And I know you guys can do it. Anybody, any one of you that is on this call tonight, or if you're watching um, the recording, you guys can all do this and it's we're all like it's worth it and you're worth it you are worth it if you're on here right now it's for a reason and i promise you it's just just keep going you know just don't give up and keep going and you're gonna touch people's lives and the more people's lives you touch and people are thanking you that's when you're like i can't turn back now like they people are depending on us to share this message with them because so many people like I started out with talking to you guys about the struggle that I was in I think about if Jamie hadn't been persistent with me I might still be a basket case and that wouldn't be good because I would not be handling my kindergartner crying every night <laughs> like I have been able to handle it so and Thank I you. wouldn't have been able to watch you walk across the stage with a newborn <laughs> in your baby carrier, which was the coolest thing ever. So you guys, thank you, Andrew, so much for sharing your knowledge. If you have any questions for her, please unmute yourself and ask. Um, and just if anybody, while you want to unmute, the two things that Andrea, I mean, she said a million different awesome things that I wrote down, but the two things that she consistently said <laughs> were consistent action and commitment. And that is with anything you do in life. It doesn't matter whether it's plexus. It doesn't matter whether it's taking your products. It doesn't matter whether it's, you know, going to the gym, whether it is getting your kids' lunch packed on a daily basis with, you know, out struggling on the struggle hot mess bus, like whatever that is in life, consistent action and commitment were, are going to be two things that will get you to that end result in a very peaceful manner. And so I love that you hit on that 
is a life skill, not, you know, obviously it works very well in plexus too, but it's a very um, life skill as well. So, and I loved with like what you shared about when you hit a roadblock, when you hit a roadblock in anything you do, you got to learn something new, you know, grow as a person and then expand your network. And that can be even with life, with the people around you, you know, expanding in the things in the areas that you need to grow, find somebody who's proficient in that and reach out to them and ask them what they're doing, you know? So I don't know. I love, I just love listening to, you know, we had Saturday mornings at 7am. Do you remember when we used to do that? Nice and early. So, mm -hmm. all right. Anybody have any questions for Andrea? I just want to say thank you, girl. That was awesome. And I'm, and I'm proud of you. I didn't realize you were like so nervous. That was, you acted like it was no big deal. So you were, you were awesome. And I will just, I will agree with you on the whole setting family hours. It sounds weird when you say that, but you have to, and it's super intentional. And I'm sure there's no business owner, no one who is in their business for themselves that don't feel the same way. When you run a business, it is 24 seven. It really is. And so you need to make sure that there's plenty of balance and whether you do the, this is my time frame for work, or this is my time frame for family or for play, whatever you have to time block that. I mean, you can't just go, you know, all hectic haywire and just hope that it all falls into place. So I'm with you on that one. Any questions for Andrea? All right. Thank you girls so much for being on. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. Thank you. One last thing, ladies. I um, wanted to share, we have Wellness Wednesday on Wednesday night. Um, I have the info ready to post here this evening. Um, and it is going to be similar to our healthy happy hour that we used to do on Thursdays. Um, we are going to do um, just kind of a post throughout the day on Wednesday, like just some general information about the lives and we're gonna have three lives on Wednesday night um, and that's gonna be our Wellness Wednesday event and we're gonna give um, people 24 hours to comment on it um, so you can tag people ahead of time and say hey this is gonna be here on this page it's gonna be on our customer page or you can ATM them for the 24 hours after um, in those lives or on that page for them to comment and participate to um, win either a seven-day trial or something else um, whatever I throw out there so that is coming up on Wednesday. Um, and then while we're in Hawaii, we leave on Saturday. Of course, there'll be Mahalo Madness on the customer page. And then we will also have um, something running on the team page just for activity and building belief and keeping that action going um, while Shannon and I are gone. But you'll still be here. And Andrea. <laughs> yes, and Andrea. Yay, can't wait. So thank you guys so much for being on. Thanks again, Andrea. You guys have a good night. Thanks.